As a new trading week gets underway, the U.S. stock averages are seeing some downward pressure. This week, all eyes will be on Washington, D.C., as well as the Fed Reserve and economic data releases. Joining me now is Peter Cardillo of First Standard Financial. Peter, great to have you here. Good to be back. Well, of course, uh, we had earnings this morning, but of course, we are focusing on other developments around the globe. Now, given that the IMF has eased uh, its forecast for the U.S. as well as the U.K., but not in other parts of the world, what do you make of that? Well, it just shows that, you know, other parts of the world are are perking up while we're basically stagnant. And um, while we're not in any danger of perhaps going to negative growth, obviously, um, we need to um, uh, get the economy going at a faster rate. And unfortunately, I think one of the problems that we have right now is this gridlock that's, uh, um, you know, uh, basically uh, captured Washington and from a political sense and uh, obviously uh, the health care bill, which, came, which seems to be in trouble all the time. And so until we get some clear um, cut picture uh, and we get out of this gridlock mode, Um, I think, you know, um, economic activity is going to be somewhat limited. And speaking of economic data, we got a mixed batch of economic data out today around the globe, including the U.S. And as we look ahead to the end of this week, we will be getting growth figures from uh, the U.S. as well as the U.K. But in terms of event risk, what do you think will be the most important? Is it earnings, data, the Fed? Well, I think earnings right now, as far as the stock market is concerned, as far as the economy is concerned, you know, what the Feds do on Wednesday, I don't expect them to raise interest rates, but I do expect them to have a quasi um, hawkish statement um, indicating that they probably will uh, hike rates one more time by year end. And I say that simply because of the fact that uh, uh, the economy probably can withstand one more rate hike. And after that, then it's anyone's guess. I think, you know, uh, there's a good possibility that for the first six months uh, going into 2018, that the Fed is probably going to stay dormant. And last but not least, before I let you go, I do want to talk about oil prices. Now, today in St. Petersburg, Russia, we have non-OPEC as well as OPEC members meeting. We're seeing a WTI as well as a Brent futures trade higher today. So at least for the near term, what do you expect? Well, I think, you know, um, we're probably going to see uh, the results of this meeting be positive for the oil market. Now, there has been some commentary already that's come out of uh, uh, out of Russia, and so far it looks pretty good. Uh, we're looking perhaps at the, at the Saudis uh, limiting uh, uh, daily production, uh, exports rather, uh, to a little over 6 million per day. I think that's a loud and clear sign to the market. By the end of this quarter, uh, we should see oil prices trading closer to 53, 55 range as opposed to where we are now. Okay, Peter. Well, we'll continue to monitor those prices this week as well as looking at the near term. So thank you so much for insight at the beginning of the week. My pleasure.